Joachim, good to uh, see you again. We first met just over three years ago um, in Hanover when you invited me uh, to see you at uh, Prussen Electric. And we've had various conversations, mostly about our respective roles in the uh, Baraka project in Abu Dhabi. Until, of course, you, you joined the, uh, joined as CEO of Fanavoima in June last year. Um, I, I've always been impressed by your passion for the nuclear industry and also your passion and warmth and respect towards the people that you've worked with. Uh, it really struck me from the first time we met and every time we've spoken. So, and um, you've gone through quite a big move yourself during a period of the pandemic crisis. Uh, I just wondered if you could tell me what was it like moving to a new country, Finland, uh, during the crisis, and what impact has that had on your start to your working life there? Yeah, Tim, good to see you uh, also from my side. And yes, uh, time flies. It is already a couple of years ago since we met, as you correctly say. So good to see you again here. And as a matter of fact, um, Things have evolved and changed quite significantly in the last year for me personally and, of course, I guess for all of us with uh, facing the, the crisis uh, as a COVID-19 uh, challenge we are all facing. Um, and and, and uh, um, as, you, as you ask, uh, how did I encounter it? How did I cope with that uh, uh, moving uh, in this, in this, uh, during this time to, 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 into a new position, into a new country, into a different culture. Uh, well, I have to say I knew Finland, of course, uh, from my former life to some extent, not in the depths. I know it now, um, of course. Um, um, but I, I used to say <clears throat> when I, when I went to Finland in May last year, uh, I, I'm saying the Finns, very warm-hearted people, they locked me away for two weeks as a welcome gift. Uh, that is, of course, not true. That was just safety and security. But uh, I guess it's very well described uh, how you feel. You come into a new country, you you, you live in a uh, start living in a new environment. You after after being locked down and locked away, you start with your assignment. Um, you encounter a company uh, which is uh, almost empty because uh, start uh, working remotely. I guess I still haven't met each and everybody of my of of Fenovoima staff uh, yet personally, um, and I think that very well describes already the basics and principles um, uh, and challenges uh, you you have uh, professional wise. But of course, also uh, personal-wise, uh, start organizing your life in a in a in a completely new frame and set up an environment with a challenging task. I guess this is this is what what in 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 very few words in principle describes the, the first impression I had and and I encountered last year. Yeah. Wow. Well, I can. I can really only imagine what it must be like to not only move country, but also to be taking on such a responsible position when the opportunity to meet people is uh, so limited. Um, thinking of daunting prospects, uh, I think we both started in our postgraduate jobs at a similar time, um, many decades ago, I fear. Um, but can you maybe describe what was your original reason that uh, attracted to to the nuclear industry, attracted you to the nuclear industry, and what your first impressions were those years ago? Well, as you very correctly say, and as everybody can see, yes, we have already some years on the clock uh, in in nuclear business or, or in business as uh, and in life. And I started my career. I have I've been now for more than thirty years in in the nuclear business, um, in 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 the, with Siemens KWU in Germany. So is a German at these days uh, a designer, uh, EPC contractor, commissioner, erector uh, of all German nuclear power plants. And <coughs> I, I guess first um, I I may say, uh, of course, I did not. I was not. Uh, f solely focused on nuclear, on, on getting nuclear uh, expertise. Um, um, it was more the attraction of the job description, the context and, and the, the package, uh, to say so, Siemens KWU at these days 
offered uh, me, of course, as a, as a starter just graduated from university. Uh, of course, your professional experience is not strongly developed. Uh, how can it? But uh, it, it was definitely a very attractive uh, opportunity. And very fast, I I was involved in, uh, first of all, very exciting, large projects um, uh, at these days uh, on one hand side and on the other hand side. I was very uh, f soon also impressed by, let's say, what it means, nuclear technology and nuclear industry. And um, let's say the, 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 the engineering challenge, the accuracy, the, the, the carefulness of thinking as a nuclear engineer and learning to think as a nuclear engineer uh, um, uh, was, was quite striking and impressive for me, uh, what it means, what is quality I guess very, I guess many people are not fully aware what that means. And if you say today, um, um, nuclear is like oil and gas, for example, I heard that very often. No, it's not. Um, uh, so, so I guess this is something you can only learn from scratch. And, and, and I guess it is also on us, on our task to transport that in, into our business, into our industry to share that with, with our uh, colleagues, with younger people, um, because we have the responsibility, in my eyes, to share this vast knowledge uh, we were able to, to capture also with our successors. Yeah, it, it's an industry that really prides itself on that sharing of knowledge. And uh, I came in as an outsider some years ago to the nuclear industry and was really struck by that difference. You've worked internationally. Uh, we first met in our involvement with the um, new nuclear industry in the UAE. Uh, what would you say after your first six months or so, what would you say your first impressions of any uh, differences between the Finnish nuclear industry and your past experience internationally and obviously mainly in Germany? Well, I mean, my international experience, um, as you know, I've, I've lived um, roughly 11 years abroad, basically in Spain and Brazil and, and some other assignments um, um, short, in shorter term. So I, I, I may say I, I have a quite good view on international nuclear industry. And then uh, coming back to your question, uh, what what makes um, uh, maybe describes uh, the finish uh, uh, or what makes it different um in principle um, um every every country is has its own nuclear and regulatory mm -hmm. environment and ecosystem to say so and this strongly characterizes also the maturity of the nuclear industry in in set in and in each country and of course, um, um, uh, Finland is a very mature country in terms of nuclear. Uh, it, it operates for many years, uh, different kind of technologies. Um, um, it has, um, as one of the, as the only country in the world, a final uh, waste repository, uh, Posiva, uh, for spent fuel. It counts on new build uh, project. Uh, Oil 3 is about to uh, become finally ready for operation uh, honey kiwi one our project we still need some some years uh, but that clearly shows that finland is counting on nuclear finland is uh, of course having a high ch a st strong challenge in terms of getting rid of co2 emission so this can be to some extent only replaced by nuclear uh, uh, because renewables is, is limited um, to to large extent um, Finland has a very mature regulator, a very experienced regulator, um, um, and Finland's uh, uh, nuclear fleet, I guess uh, one may say, is highly recognized for highest availability and performance uh, in, in operation. So I guess this is, this is what describes Finland in, in a nutshell. It is probably in the first quartile uh, in Vano thinking uh, in terms of operation, and this, of course, includes safety. Yeah, yeah, a, a truly well-respected industry. Is there is there anything that surprised you in the first six months, maybe about your team or about the environment? Uh, yeah, what what might have surprised you in the first six months? 
I mean, I have everyday surprises, but I guess this is not what you want to know. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 what is surprising or what was surprising for me? Maybe maybe the most surprising thing is uh, uh, that uh, how, how positively nuclear is recognized uh, uh, and received in public perception and in, in Finland. <laughs> Um, um, we see that with our plant, uh, uh, our site, honey kiwi, I try to be there as often as possible. As uh, a perception there uh, from the municipalities, from, from the surrounding is tremendous, is outstanding. We have, we have polls saying uh, where more than 70% are in favor of nuclear. Uh, this does not only affect um, our uh, environment in honey kiwi. Uh, in Puyayoki, where we built the plant, um, I guess Finnish society um, is very, uh, let's say, um, uh, logic when it comes to nuclear. It is not emotional like we in Germany, for example. Uh, so, so public perception and support of nuclear is extremely high. That was for me, yeah, coming from Germany, of course, a, a very big surprise. You know the situation mm. in Germany. And I, I used to say uh, when I was with Poison Electra, even our 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 plants or the Poison Electra plants in the surrounding and the municipalities, uh, we were not always uh, very warmly received and happily received. And I used to say, except one day per year when we paid the income taxes um, uh, to the municipality. Uh, but seriously, in a nutshell, um, I think the most positive uh, um, impression is how positively nuclear is received in, in, in Finland and not stigmatized like, like something evil, to say so. Yeah. Now, I, I, I often do when I travel, and until this past year, I travel quite a lot with my work, I, I do the taxi test. And I ask that getting a conversation with the taxi driver and they usually ask what I do for a living, why I'm here. And of course, the conversation comes around to nuclear and you can read the response of different countries, uh, as you say, whether it's emotionally positive or emotionally negative or or just extremely logical. Uh, this is a great source of uh, low carbon energy. Let's look at it logically like that rather than emotionally so uh, i can i can really uh, understand what you're saying there and um, the nuclear industry prides itself on the sharing as we mentioned earlier and learning from that experience that it's gained over the years through the sharing of experience what lessons would you like to share with the wider nuclear industry from this project from what you've seen in the first 6 months I mean, you, 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 I, you, you mentioned in my eyes two, two things. Um, first, um, the, the attitude in principle and general of the nuclear industry to share expertise and knowledge. Um, I think that is important really to underline. Uh, um, and this in, for the operators has very much to do with WANO, which is the World Nuclear Association of Nuclear Operators. Where, where, uh, and of course, INPO and others, but um, uh, where knowledge and expertise uh, is 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 shared and and and, and multiplied in order to uh, uh, really um, uh, focus on safety. Uh, I guess this is very very different compared to any other industry, uh, uh, and that is also for people coming to the nuclear industry. Uh, uh, first of all, difficult to understand that we share knowledge, that, that, that this is one of our principles to share knowledge, uh, for safety purpose and for safety reason and, and not, uh, prevailing, uh, let's say competitive perspectives in this, in this regard. And, and I mean, what I would share, could share from, from my first uh, six months, of course, um, I guess, um, this is very typical for any New build project or for any large scale project um, that <clears throat> nowadays uh, executing such a project um, is, I guess, much, much more challenging um, than it was in the past. Uh, if you imagine, I mean, have a look on the industry in the 70s, in the 80s, 
many, many plants were built all over the world in parallel, uh, a huge industry, huge expertise. Um, we, we lost this capability to some extent, at least in, 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 the, in the Western world. And uh, we, we painfully learn how to come back, um, not still there uh, to a large extent. But um, what what I what I uh, of course uh, uh, and and I guess this is to some extent a no brainer. Uh, what what I would share. I mean, one thing is the regulatory environment. Extremely important to adapt as an as a contractor to the regulatory environment you are in. Extremely important, uh, success critical, and if you if you can't cope if you cannot adapt and adopt to the uh, existing ecosystem i used to say i used to call it uh, you will face problems in your project um and this is definitely one so one one point um and and another experience of course this goes in line to some extent with the ability to adapt and adopt um to to have a adapted supply chain in place um, so so that you are able to deliver in the country you want to uh, build the plant. So I think these are two um, topics and two uh, issues I, I, I would happy, I'm happily sharing. And, and of course, um, um, again, another project management principle, maybe be as lean and as effective as possible uh, uh, and any interface uh, in level and uh, in level one or level two becomes uh, is multiplied by by ten in a different level of the schedule. Get rid of interfaces. Uh, uh, focus on the must bees and not on the nice to haves. Uh, uh, such a huge project, extremely difficult otherwise to execute. We see that in in many examples. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel? I, I was um, I came across an example recently of a very old project from a very famous cathedral in in the UK, St Paul's Cathedral in London, and uh, it, it, this example talks about that project. It's many hundreds of years ago, a completely different world to the one we live in now. But if you return to these projects of many centuries ago. One's focus is not at all on whether they were on budget or whether they were on time and things like that. In today's world, that seems all important. You yourself referred to OL3 and its delays that have been going on for years now. And um, how do you combine the how do you feel it's best to combine the safety approach of new tech, which is imperative? With today's modern world, the project should be always be on time and on budget. Um, could you reflect on those challenges? <clears throat> yes, yes, this is of course a very Im important topic, uh, Tim. You you are raising because, um, and and then this is maybe also one of the main reasons why we, among other influences, suffer such such uh, severe impact, um, because we we have a high. A, a, a huge appetite for information and, and, uh, many different stakeholders have a huge appetite of information. So you have to have a lot of processes in place. And again, um, are these processes nice to have or are they a must be? Um, one question. Uh, this is, this is for sure. This is for sure. Um, uh, 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 one indicator who influences, um, uh, projects. Another indicator, of course, also is, the maturity of designs and technologies and the and the level of acceptance by 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 the regulator um, um, and maybe the basic principle what you for what you want to say is in former times we have we have focused on the product i guess we have also done that in the 70s and on the eight in the 80s when we built uh, many power plants in parallel and nowadays we are focusing on the process and very often the process does not match with, uh, in, with 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 real life, and then these inconsistencies combined with with many uh, ingredients, uh, licensing, technology, supply chain, uh, etc., um, uh, um, cause a very complex project situation, and at the end uh, lead to significant uh, or less significant delay or other influences and impact. Yeah. 
I think that those delays are often mentioned when the role of the nuclear industry in terms of uh, playing a role with regards to reducing carbon emissions, for example, is talked about. Delays and cost overruns are often referred to as reasons against. What is your view about the future of the nuclear industry and nuclear energy in particular, both in Finland, but also internationally? <clears throat> I, I mean, I see, I see two dimensions, Tim. Uh, one one dimension is, of course, uh, is nuclear in my eyes needed uh, or not? Uh, the answer might be simple from my side and easy to understand. Uh, my my answer definitely is uh, yes. We still need nuclear energy for many many years because uh, uh, we are still not able to to store renewable energy uh, in in a sufficient scale to acknowledge it as base load. Uh, and and therefore um, combined with a with a desire to reduce CO2 emission and the the need to reduce CO2 emission, um, um, I as an engineer don't see any other option than that. That is one one dimension. And and the other dimension, of course, is um, 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 except some few countries who never stop building, China, Korea, South Korea, of course, um, uh, uh, Russia, um, uh, all other. To large extent, um, broke the chain uh, uh, um, and lost large capabilities and strong capabilities because there was too much time between the last plant build and then the first uh, uh, later on uh, uh, constructed again. Uh, so the ability to deliver uh, the supply chain, the, the skills and uh, uh, capabilities of this. Uh, the the OEMs or, or any other suppliers very limited had to be re-established had to be re-created um, to some extent. So I think I think that these are these are the dimensions which lead to the situation uh, we are in today. Okay, uh, and and I guess just finally, you know. It, it, Staffing the nuclear industry globally is a passion of ours and ensuring that the right people are on the right projects. Why would you say people that are watching this interview or listening to this interview, why should they consider the Fenevoima project as one they might be interested in? <clears throat> well, I hope they consider because this is a huge project. I mean, this is a multi-billion euro project. Uh, with, with a with a considerable uh, um, uh, schedule uh, uh, and a, and a very exciting challenge. I mean, I mean uh, to to whoever whomever and whenever you have executed a project uh, and you like projects, um, of course you have to like it. Um, then then and this is definitely the place to be. I mean uh, 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 the, the the project itself. Um, um, the, the purpose of the project are very exciting. Uh, the, the conditions we are offering here, we have a very international staff. We have more than 20 nations in Finnovoim, within Finnovoima. Uh, we are a young organization, a growing organization. We are maturing, uh, even, even recognized by Stuck that we value quality. So, so, so we are on our way to become an intelligent licensee. Um, um, and and we have a lot of uh, of course interesting perspectives. I mean, uh, what we said uh, um, uh, we will we we hope to obtain a construction license end of this year. So next year uh, construction we have uh, already a lot of things ongoing on site. We'll start uh, supply chain uh, 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 tremendous in, and and very exciting and interesting uh, part of the project. Um, the engineering part, so we we can you can offer we can offer a, a very broad scale of of very exciting activities. Um, um, so I guess uh, if not yet attracted, uh, now you should be attracted. Uh, 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 I guess uh, uh, such a project offers a lot of interesting, exciting opportunities. Yeah, thank you, Joachim. That's a, that's a really good insight both into the nuclear industry. Uh, in Finland and internationally, and also into your project at Fenavoima. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Tim, it was a pleasure. 
always and and best to you stay safe thank you thank you